Greetings developers and welcome to our introductory series to the development teleporter. Uh, this is the showing off here how to actually set up your dev teleport component. Maybe you're actually sick of setting up teleport coordinates between different projects and you wanted kind of like a universal standard that just worked with any pawn and in multiplayer and whatever. Uh, so thank you so much for actually downloading our tool sets. This is actually a quick, easy way to get set up on uh, your player pawn and setting up some basic teleport locations and how they work. All right. So the first thing that you're going to want to do um, is set up your actual dev component. And that dev component can actually be plugged into either your pawn or your player controller. Uh, we recommend the your player controller itself uh, since you might actually lose that player pawn um, in like a multiplayer game or whatever and you get deassociated with it. Um, but if it's on the uh, player controller itself, then it actually allows for it to take that same functionality onto other pawns, and then those pawns could be a completely different class, and you can still use the teleport to uh, whatever location you want. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, so you can start here. You can see I'm um, starting off in a third-person uh, template just provided by Epic here. So you can see that there is some uh, basic game modes. Uh, this BP third-person game mode and um, the stock player controller class that's actually C++. We're actually gonna need to make a new one. So if you already have this in your project, you already have a player controller, or you, uh, we can actually go to the third person later on, but we'll show you this on the player controller first. Let's uh, create a new uh, player controller. Instead of new player controller, we'll call it like my player controller, and stick it into content blueprints, that's fine. And we'll save that out. And as soon as it's done here, there we go. All you need to do now is hit add, type in dev teleport, and you'll actually see here BP dev teleport component. Boom, you're done. That's all you need to do for the basic setup. You can compile and save, and uh, we'll close this out. Just to confirm, go to your world settings. If, you're, if you don't see where those world settings is, you can go to window and underneath level editor all the way down here these are actually should be um they should be uh, uh alphabetical for you except for world partition and these but that's fine uh all right uh, down to the bottom of this section uh, should be world settings open that up and you'll see here uh the game mode that is overriding you can even go to the actual game mode itself and see here that i've changed my player controller let's compile this as well save it and close Awesome. All right. Now we need to actually define a location for us to teleport to. Uh, so let's go back into development tool, uh, development teleport, blueprints, dev teleport. And in here, you'll actually see the BP dev teleport location. You'll drag that in. Uh, as you can see here, I'm getting some warnings uh, just because it's actually doing a collision check. So I'm just dragging it into my viewport and I can place it anywhere. But as you can see, I do some collision check testing and offset it to make sure that we're not actually uh, in inside of a collision. So there we go. This is actually now a new teleport location. You can see here how I have hotkey equals none. I'm going to deselect that so it's easier to see because actually when you do the highlight, it highlights the, the text. Uh, and that's just unfortunate with the, uh, the back facing, how it highlights them. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, anyway, now if you wanted to, we can actually uh, open this guy up in the details panel. You can go Windows and uh, where is it? Details and Details 1. Now display that in my dock on the side or wherever you have the, the default setup. Uh, select it. You have um, some basic uh, values here that you can change. So you can see here, uh, use auto adjust from collision. Uh, you can turn that off if you wanted to for placement. So if you wanted to, I, I don't recommend this, but you can shove it into the ground, but you might have some issues. So to easily, you know, allow it to offset from collision, this is just based on a construction script. I can try to shove it into the ground and it'll just pop right back up. And this also works for walls as well. Maybe I'm shoving it into the wall and then come back here. Well, there you go. All right, so let's position it here. And let's call this 
just location one, just for an easy setup. Uh, and now we can also assign a hotkey to it. Um, let's do something simple. So we can actually hit our keyboard here. And it, as soon as we uh, now press something on our keyboard for the next key uh, to input. So I press one, boom, hotkey number one. Uh, but maybe, you know, number one on your game character, whatever is an ability or selecting a weapon or whatever. Uh, so maybe we don't want that. Maybe it's uh, easier to actually do like shift one or uh, alt shift one or something like that. So shift one works just to get the point across. All right, cool. So now that we have location one and hotkey equals one, I'm just going to make sure. Oh, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be spawning at my default start position. So I'll be starting here. And let's jump into game. So you can actually press the play button up at the top there. And now, if I hit shift one, boom, I just teleported. I teleported to my new location. And you can see there's some debug information that uh, shows up in the top left there. Um, these are only on displaying on development. Uh, so you can disable those as, as you wish. Uh, but now, the other thing that I have set up is by default, I have on shift and the home key, so H-O-M-E, shift and home. I now have this uh, teleport list tool for you. So you can actually see here, this is also a draggable widget. So you can actually place it kind of wherever you want. If you wanted to, you know, kind of look around. But you can see here I have some basic information that's displaying relative to you. And settings uh, reset uh, to camera rotation right now, that's actually false. So that needs to display properly. I'll need to actually fix that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, actually, sorry about that. <laughs> you can see now when I'm actually highlighting location one, this information now populates. So I can actually select that and boom, it does the exact same thing as our uh, hotkey. There's a few other bits so you can actually close with the X here or you can hit close on teleport and that closes off the menu and uh, returns you back to your game input settings as well. So yeah, that is that easy. And now, all we, if we wanted to, uh, we can actually just take this and duplicate this guy over to, I don't know, another location. Maybe set him up here. Uh, you can see if I'm actually shoving this into an invalid location. Uh, if it's actually trying to do some collision offsetting and it can't find its way out of, out of it. Um, then you'll see kind of like the player start position. It shows the bad size and invalid location. This will also uh, deactivate, yeah, we'll see here, if I do shift home, it will deactivate that teleport location. That will not work. But as soon as I pull it up, and that should now work. So I alt P. Uh, so now we'll actually see uh, two location one. So we have to change their names. Uh, there's no uh, automatic renaming because maybe you want uh, the same name. I don't know. I don't want to force anything on you so you can actually change that to location two i recommend also changing the hotkey you know we can do have that as shift two and you can see both of these locations have their particular hotkey set as well as their names so now if i jump back in the game and let's do the hotkeys first we'll do shift one boom shift two yay all right awesome and that also uh, takes the rotation into account as well. So you can rotate your character. And I'll jump back in and I'll go shift two and there you go. But maybe you can see here, oh, I go to shift one and shift two. I want to reset my rotation and my orientation to wherever I'm looking. So this setup here, when I'm actually opening up this logic uh, setup or logic, uh, sorry, draw, uh, category, you can see force camera rotation reset. Uh, this is just for displaying purposes. I have the little camera. This is assuming that you're actually using uh, like Unreal's uh, controller, um, uh, their character movement, I should say rather. So it's actually forcing the character uh, rotation and using that as the forward. So uh, now um, your camera setup might differ from the Unreal's base setup. But if you're starting off, you know, creating your indie game and using like the character movement template, then it will use uh, control rotation. So if you've played uh, anything with the character orientation and uh, uh, control rotation, you'll know what I'm talking about. So if I hit shift two now, you can see now I'm actually facing the other direction instead of, you know, 
allowing it to not to adjust my camera. So this allows you to reset your camera. Maybe you're at a start of a cave or, you know, whatever you wanted to do uh, for forcing, you know, a, a new um, rot uh, rotation on the camera to tell your players, hey, I want you to go this direction and forcing the, the camera rotation in that direction as well. Uh, for first person, that's probably not going to matter, but for games like third person that have orbit cameras, that's something that you're probably going to want to going to want to use. Cool. Those are kind of the basics, and hopefully that uh, gets you started. Uh, in the next videos here, we'll actually go through what the rest of these actually do, and how this also works in uh, world partition as well as multiplayer. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.